the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Almighty God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. E prato sali branda gabarato skadi bahesha gede gede balakata fusi gepras. Thank you. Manda kaparako tasha da branda gada balakato siyeta. You are the mighty God, the ruler over the nations. We give you God the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. We give you God the highest praise. From the rising of the sun Very simple song We give you God We give you God The highest praise From the rising of the sun To the setting of the sun We give you God We give you God The highest praise from the rising of the sun Just the voices We give you God Bless us tonight, O oh God. Let there be a mighty move of your spirit in our midst, giving us understanding, establishing our victory, granting us command over life and destiny. We submit ourselves to the superior wisdom of your word. And we pray tonight as always, that Jesus remains glorified in our lives. Jesus remains glorified in this place. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Complete deliverance part two. We have a lot to do. And so we have to get to the business of the night immediately. For those of you who are just joining us, we're on a series attempting to study Satan, demons, and the activity of unclean spirits to the end that we understand how to walk experientially in victory. It takes light and it takes knowledge this is a kingdom that functions by light and it is important that believers be equipped now did you know that in the course of my studying this series afresh I discovered that Jesus never sent any disciples he never sent the Apostles 
to do anything missions without a thorough understanding of the structure and the system of darkness it is a risk to ever explore anything that makes for kingdom come in ignorance especially ignorance of the devices of the devil please you must open up your eyes and your spirit to this teaching don't be distracted tonight let me do a quick recap part one last week we started by examining um, the biblical basis for the study of Satan demons and what we call demonology is there a biblical basis to study demons to study Satan and the operations of darkness I did teach us that theologically speaking for anything to be established at, as doctrine there are three requirements number one it must be captured in the Old Testament number two it must be captured in the earth work of Jesus Christ and number three it must be captured in the life of the Apostles and the early church and we took our time to examine the concept of Satan evil and the reality of the operation of darkness in the Old Testament using the fall of man the story of Job and Israel and their captivity in Egypt we also looked at the ministry of Jesus his temptation Jesus himself taught on deliverance Jesus administered deliverance then we looked at the life of the Apostles Philip in Samaria Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus and encouraging them teaching them on the structure of darkness Apostle Peter encouraged us to be sober and to be vigilant because there was an adversary the devil who is seeking whom he will devour and then John giving us an explanation from his vision in Revelation that Satan was that adversary Satan the old serpent so we established the fact that from the Old Testament the ministry of Jesus and the early church the Bible gives us legitimate grounds to study on Satan and his structure then we went further to deal with the origin of Satan you can get the teaching the origin of Satan I, I was not able to touch on demons but we did look at the origin of Satan we established a few things where did he come from and I explained to us two schools of thought based on scholars and their understandings we look at Ezekiel 28 Isaiah 14 Revelations 12 these are the fundamental scriptures that talk about Satan I taught you um, the principle of prophetic parallels remember and then we explain the name Lucifer from the Hebrew tongue meaning the shining one the light bearer and that the word devil comes from the Greek word diabolos which means the accuser or the slanderer and um, we examine a few names that Satan is called in scripture he's called Lucifer the devil Satan the thief the enemy the evil one and so on and so forth and um, but the most important part of the teaching last week and I'm doing a quick recap on that is what does Satan want why all of this attack what exactly is Satan's objective and um, we examine from scripture that there are two things based on the revelation of scripture that Satan is out looking for number one is dominion and number two transgenerational allegiance please write that down and never forget it that behind the ministry of stealing killing destruction behind everything that is anti-christ and anti-god and anti-kingdom there is one singular drive that satan alongside his demon spirits seek to achieve dominion that dominion that was given to man and then transgenerational allegiance the reality of transgenerational allegiance is what brought the structure for things like altars causes patterns because the assignment of altars the assignment of causes the assignment of patterns is to make for continuity from individual to individual these are the legitimate systems in the realm of the spirit that can perpetuate evil even when the initiator has left are we together are you getting my teaching now 
we'll do more of, of that today so that satan's passion for transgenerational allegiance sponsored his inventing this system that we call courses this system that we call altars and patterns patterns are repetitive occurrences that happen to people within a predefined bloodline patterns you find patterns among family members usually negative you find patterns among um, people within certain regions patterns of irresponsibility patterns of anger patterns of theft patterns of untimely death all of these things are satan's invention towards one goal i'm demystifying satan for us so that um, some of these superstitious ideas we've heard about him as complicated as satan and the dark world looks there has always been a principal motivation or two dominion a quest a thirst an unbending passion for dominion and transgenerational allegiance he told jesus all these have been given to me but i don't need them all i need from you is since you are a representation of the image of the father bow down to me bowing down is a prophetic language it means acknowledge my lordship over you are we together we wrapped up last week by looking at the fact that everything negative that has happened in your life is happening in your life is not really what satan is after so if you see barrenness or poverty or sickness or violence or irresponsibility or moral decadence or anything at all that is anti-god and anti-christ let it be known to you dear believers that satan is not after those things those things are only a means to an end what is the end that he will gain dominion and he will bring whole territories to submit to him perpetually and i shared with us that this is the same principle that is used in terrorism that every time a terrorist captures a family member or a loved one it is not the person they capture that they are interested in but they are capturing that person to get the attention of the person and the thing that they want is that true so when they capture your child or your loved one usually they subject them to some kind of torture and they give you an opportunity to to hear their cry and in the presence of that lamentation you will become emotionally connected to their pain and you will easily bend to whatever they want so that's what satan does if he makes sure that you don't have a child or you don't move forward or there is a death sentence on you in terms of a medical report he knows that you will not suffer long with pain you will usually go to look for alternatives so he will cause the problem and be waiting at the other side of your pain to suggest an idea go to the village go and sacrifice this bow to this bow to that unfortunately because christianity was not as strong as it is now in the days of our parents and grandparents and so on and so forth most of these people uh, especially mixing christianity with trado african religion when satan pressed on them they went straight to these deities through mediums and that was an opportunity for satan and most of these people listen carefully they came into covenants on behalf of whole territories make sure that our farms produce food make sure that every time our enemies come and want to strike us let it be raining perpetually so that they will run away in response we will worship you and we will ensure that our children and our children's children worship you and the devil said that's a deal that's all i want and in all fairness to him in in many regards even though he's a deceiver but in many regards they kept their own part then the missionaries came and we received jesus christ and listen carefully in receiving jesus christ what happened was that when we received jesus christ satan now came listen carefully because of ignorance in the complete gospel say complete gospel the missionaries were sincere but they brought the evangelical dimension of the gospel jesus saves eternal life but the spiritual intelligence that will help us to maneuver this legal access it was not brought 
so both the missionaries and those who believed in them eventually started dying like chickens and most people did not know what to do but thank god for light in the name of jesus all satan is looking for is dominion the dominion god gave man and then transgenerational allegiance so the challenge that you call a financial problem or a demonic problem the spirits that molest you in dreams all of those imageries that you see all those are coordinated attempts to bring and force you to a point where you go back to the patterns that can now allow him to be lord over you someone shout no way Part two, let's begin our teaching now. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. John chapter 8 and verse 36, the Amplified. Let's read it one more time before we begin. This is where we got our theme from, complete deliverance. Can you give it to us? John 8, 36. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. So if the Son liberates you, makes you free men then you are really and unquestionably free hallelujah obadiah 1 and verse 17 obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 let's we can go back to king james obadiah 1 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and shall possess amen now i'll be teaching you on the structure and the operation of satan the structure and the operation of satan that also includes demons we want to look at the structure how does the demonic kingdom how is it built what is the structure like and what is the modus operandi of satan how does he operate hallelujah praise the name of the lord a few scriptures now because we are dealing with a very delicate subject we're going to be doing a lot of scriptural readings and i want you to write them and then read them follow very closely because you will be learning that the greatest antidote to darkness and error is truth are we together now revelation chapter 12 will start from verse 7 to 9 revelations 12 7 to 9 is it all right if we read this together one to read and the dragon fought and his angels hold on hold on hold on you would notice there please help me with my screen you would notice there the bible says there was war in heaven then it says michael and his angels michael and his michael and his and then they fought against who and then the dragon also fought and his so immediately we see that there is a structure even while it was in heaven satan did not do it alone the bible acknowledges that there were certain angels that followed that rebellion satan and his angels hallelujah satan and his angels matthew 25 and verse 41 we're looking at a few scriptures that piece together the structure of the demonic kingdom ready then shall he say unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his so satan has subjects satan has a a, a system an organized demonic system we know that satan has angels second peter chapter 2 and verse 4 second peter chapter 2 and verse 4 are you ready for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved to judgment 
So it's not only Satan that sinned. He did not sin alone. The Bible tells us that there were angels that sinned. I don't want to complicate your understanding tonight with this story. Hmm. Matthew 12 and verse 26. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 26. Remember this was when Jesus casted out a demon spirit and then they accused him. What was the accusation? That he was using Beelzebub, the prince of demons. So Jesus was giving them explanation now. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. You are not as powerful as your knowledge of spiritual things. You are as powerful as your knowledge of scripture. Knowing spiritual things is not where strength comes from. Knowing the scripture. He say ye err, not knowing the scripture. You must be sound in scripture, not just in spiritual things. Just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is consistent with the word of God. The simplicity of the knowledge of scripture is where the believer's authority comes from. Are we learning now? Please give it back to us. Matthew 12, 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Who is speaking here? Jesus. How shall... Please, can you help me with my screen? It's coming on and off, gentlemen. Let me just use this for time. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom... Who tells us here that Satan has a kingdom? Jesus himself is acknowledging that Satan has a kingdom and that he intends for his kingdom to stand. But that the only way his kingdom stands is when he is united. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? Now let's go to the Pauline epistles. Ephesians... Um, Let's start from chapter 1. Ephesians 1 and 21. Ephesians 1, 21. Paul began to give us the theological basis for our authority in Christ. And the first basis he gave us is our oneness with Christ. And then second, our positional advantage. And in explaining our positional advantage, he says here that we have been raised with Christ far above now he begins to give us an idea of a structure far above principality are we still together and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come that means there is a demonic structure are we together now ephesians chapter 6 please from verse 11 and 12 ephesians 6 11 and 12 ephesians 6 but put the whole armor of god why that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil hold on you see what paul is telling us here paul is speaking to people who are already saved and he's saying if the only thing you have is just the awareness of the new birth experience, you will still be victims. There is something called the whole armor of God. We'll deal with that in part three. But it says that it takes the whole armor of God for you to be able to stand against the wiles. The wiles there means the devices, the strategies of the devil. Verse 12. Read with me if you can see it. Ready? One to read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood hold on now be very careful as we read from there but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places it was paul that began to give us this revelation how do we trust the revelation of paul because Paul is not Jesus. And if we are to believe Paul, we must be able to vet where he got his revelation from. Because Paul was not part of the disciples that was directly mentored by Jesus. So how then do we trust that what Paul is saying is accurate? Ephesians chapter 3, beginning from verse 3. Before Paul began his discourse, 
He gave us the basis so that we would not doubt the depth of what he was communicating. Are you ready now? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. He says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by this is where i was going to so who revealed to paul the spirit so we can trust what paul is saying because we have now examined the basis for his revelation are you seeing how doctrine is established now we can't take chances because there were things paul said that he said i speak as a man in other words this is my opinion do not make a doctrine out of it but now he's speaking in his capacity as an apostle and he's saying even though i was not with the disciples learning directly under jesus but the spirit of god has come to grant me access to an explanation of something that was not yet known that means even when the prophets talked about these things, they were just prophesying. It was not out of knowledge. It was just manifesting the spirit. Are we learning? Write this down, please. Satan, alongside demons, or what the Bible calls evil or unclean spirits, make up what we call the satanic kingdom. Please write it down. Satan, alongside demons, the Bible calls them evil or unclean spirits. Make up the satanic kingdom. So when we're talking about the satanic kingdom, essentially, it involves Satan and demon spirits. May I remind you from last week's teaching that I taught you here that the arch enemy of Satan is not God. The arch enemy of Satan is man. There is no record in scripture it's impossible and it does not make spiritual sense and scriptural sense for Satan or God to be the arch enemy of Satan. The arch enemy of Satan is man. He does not steal and kill and destroy from God. Are we together now? Yes. There is no mention in the word of Satan attacking the word. But when the word became flesh and he became a man, Satan now followed him and attacked him until the wisdom of God led Satan to look like he killed him, only for him to resurrect in victory. Are you seeing that now? So Satan, alongside demons and unclean spirits, make up the satanic kingdom. Please look up. Some of you may be asking now, where do men, human vessels come in? Because I'm sure that most of you are waiting anxiously for me to talk about the issue of witches and wizards. And you are wondering why I didn't include them in that list. Now, let me tell you this. Every human vessel, every human vessel that Satan walks through to execute his purposes. Listen carefully. Every human vessel that Satan uses is the same vessel intended to bring the glory to reveal the glory of God. Are we together now? The very nature of operating on earth here is such that you cannot operate on earth legitimately without a human participation. So the idea of man in partnership with the Holy Spirit is not Satan's idea. It is God's idea. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he, that Lord, given to the sons of men. Are we together now? very very important so when you are defining the satanic kingdom you don't necessarily bring men men were not created by satan they are god's creation and for his glory he only took advantage of them because of ignorance and in compliance with the law of territory is someone understanding this now what is the assignment of the demonic kingdom corporately speaking we know that satan has a personal assignment ultimately to gain dominion and to bring transgenerational allegiance but as a demonic structure what exactly is their assignment write this down to fight and frustrate the purposes of god by any and all means that's it to fight 
and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. This is the corporate motto and the corporate assignment of the demonic kingdom to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by all means please look up when we say the purposes of God what are we talking about number one coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ the first assignment of Satan in order of priority is to stop everybody who is on earth if possible from coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ that is plan A if plan A does not work and you now give your life to Christ the next assignment is to frustrate your efficiency in terms of your growth and your efficiency in serving the purposes of God is it is it clear enough now everywhere you see Satan everywhere you see demons everywhere you see evil men in partnership with these spirits this is their corporate mandate to fight and to frustrate the purposes of God and in order of priority Satan's plan a is to make sure that they do not come into the knowledge because the Bible says in John 17 and verse 3 it says and this is eternal life that they may know thee the one through God John 17 3 this is eternal life he says that they may know you the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent are we together now what is eternal life the knowledge of Jesus eternal life is not just responding to an altar call that through the preaching of the gospel I am not ashamed of the gospel he says for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes everyone satan and the satanic kingdom corporately speaking have a singular assignment to fight and to frustrate the purposes of god by any and all means the key phrase here is any and all means sickness is part of the any and all means agenda please look up delay any and all means agenda causes everything you call destruction or the expressions of his wickedness is part of that any and all means agenda if satan can use an accident he will use it if he can use a plane crash he can he will use it if he can use your dying he will use it if he can use your being sick he will use it anything at all that will achieve that purpose he will use it any and all means is an attempt to describe the extent of his determination and desperation can i tell you this when you want to study desperation study satan a man who is already aware of his eminent defeat and yet in that imminent defeat he makes up his mind without fail that he will keep fighting i hope you know that it's not only christians that study the bible when Satan came to Jesus, at least we know how Jesus learned scripture in the flesh. He went to the temple to study. So how did Satan learn his own? All through scripture, everybody who understood scripture understood it by study. If man understood scripture, he understood by study. Even the word of God understood scripture as a human vessel by study. So how do you think Satan knew what was written? The only way to be approved is to study. Is that true? Satan alongside demons and evil spirits make up the satanic kingdom. And then they have a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. We conclude from these scriptures that satan has 
an operational system now i want to teach you we have looked a bit at the structure i don't want to go into the details hopefully in another teaching that relates to this we'll look at what principalities and powers and rulers are but all of these things just define three things listen in understanding maybe i should just put a word or two in understanding the structure of satan the structure of satan is defined according to three things number one geography number two functions please understand this geography means location there are spirits that reside in heavenly places that is their jurisdiction there are spirits that reside in specific geographic regions for instance gadara do not cast us out of this region are we together now so in structuring the satanic kingdom satan used a number of factors number one is geography the bible shows us that these demons themselves they honor geography number two functions for instance you can read in your bible certain spirits called the spirit of death a lying spirit the spirit of infirmity when we're dealing with deliverance proper you will be learning that one of the ways we administer scriptural deliverance is not necessarily by knowing the name of every demon you can identify them by the operation are we together now yes in fact the bible tells us one time when jesus came and met an epileptic patient and the disciples were trying to cast out that demon and nothing happened the bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit and then number three i gave you two number three ranking there are ranks there are ranks not only for angels but there are ranks even for demon spirits an example of that we see is in mark chapter 5 we're coming there when jesus met the madman in gadara and he said what is your name he said my name is legion for we are many so there was a legion but it was not a legion that spoke there was one person who spoke on behalf of that legion do you agree that there is ranking number two jesus himself was speaking about deliverance and he said when a spirit leaves a man he says it goes through dry regions is that true sourcing for a place of rest not finding any the bible says it will say let me go back to my house and it will go back to his house who is the house now the human vessel or any material vessel and he will find it swept and clean and the bible says that spirit will go back and bring seven others greater than it so there is ranking classification the structure of the demonic kingdom let me recap again number one is based on geography geography there is the prince of persia the bible identifies him with that geography and then number two based on what function infirmity sickness conditions and so on and so forth and then number three based on ranking let's go to the operational system I'm, I'm interested in this now the operational system we're looking at the structure and the operation of satan and the demonic kingdom now we're looking at the operational system please look up every organization and indeed every kingdom has a modus operandi that means they have a way that they operate are we in agreement with that it is important to know how satan operates this is where spiritual intelligence comes in please i pray in the name of jesus christ that no spirit would distract you while you are listening to me because for some of you you are going to be god is going to be opening up to you it, it is no mystery how satan operates the word of God in black and white, very clear terms, reveals to us how Satan operates. Two scriptures, Ephesians 6, 11. Does Satan have an operational system? Yes, sir. Put on the whole armor of God. 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles the word wiles there is the word schemes or devices the wiles of the devil schemes of the devil so satan does not just attack there is a system there is a game plan there is a destruction plan he does not just stand up and move around and say how do i destroy this family there is a plan second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. let's read together if you can see it projected one to read lest satan should gain an advantage of us uh-huh for we are not ignorant of his devices 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 strategies now please play very close attention let's identify from scripture some of the things that satan and demons are involved with we are looking from the lens of scripture now we want to examine a few activities of satan and demon spirits the activities help us reveal the structure are we together i mean the the operation now when you look at what satan does you also find in what he does how he does it are we learning i'll be giving you a few scriptures number one satan and demons fight write it down the bible shows us that satan and even demon spirits that they fight revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought and the bible says the dragon fought and his angels fought so it is part of satan's character and it is part of satan's modus operandi to fight two satan hinders or he resists first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 satan resists demons resist he says wherefore we would have come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us who hindered them satan a spirit can hinder men if satan can hinder an apostle it means he can try to hinder breakthrough he can try to hinder lifting anything that is coming to you for your advantage it is possible for satan to try to hinder it number three satan and demons also they steal they kill and they destroy john 10 10 everything that applies to satan also apply to demon spirits satan and indeed demon spirits kill they steal they kill and they destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal most serious arm robbers go in groups are we together when they want to rob say a bank you don't find an individual no matter how strong it's usually a coordinated activity the bible says he cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy so satan steals what does he steal anything at all what does he kill everyone and everything next activity that reveals the modus operandi of satan are you ready satan and demons lie start that one john okay let me give you one more scripture about stealing killing and destroying matthew chapter 13 and verse 19 please write it down matthew 13 and verse 19 the bible lets us know that satan is a thief jesus was teaching this in the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not he says then cometh the wicked one another word for satan and catcheth away that which which was sown in his heart can you imagine how satan steals he can steal and even enter your heart 
your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it satan can enter and steal or your spirit or whatever it is he can steal anything no wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery no wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good but in the name of jesus christ he's finally meeting his resistance forever next point satan and demons lie john 8 44 satan by his consistency of lying and himself a title that jesus himself acknowledged as the father you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father the lust of your father ye will do for he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he's in his default state that means when satan feels a lie there's no point feeling guilty that's who he is there are yoruba people who speak yoruba and english and hausa and other tribes but when you are speaking your local dialect you speak it with confidence and joy here's what the bible is telling you you ever doubted satan's language what tribe is he that's it right there the bible says that satan when he speaketh a lie jesus is talking now he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it the word father there is the same word that is used towards god abba an originator and a defender of a cause that means you it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains ah. <laughs> the father of lies i told you to start that one you will soon know why next point very quickly satan is a master of falsehood he disguises himself he uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood the strategy of disguise or falsehood second corinthians 11 and verse 14 satan disguises himself are you ready and no marvel he says for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light one of the strategies of satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood he can disguise himself next satan deceives start that one please satan deceives we're studying the modus operandi of satan satan deceives second corinthians 11 and verse 3 satan deceives he's a master deceiver are you learning tonight but i fear less by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve, the word there is deceived, he beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying that Satan employed a strategy and deceived Eve. You know, I taught you that um, Adam was not deceived. Adam fell because of love. It was Eve that was deceived. Are we together? Absolutely, it's in your Bible. We're going to read that. There is Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that fell. Eve was deceived. And Adam followed her because he loved her. The second Adam, who is Jesus, was he deceived? He came willingly because he loved his Eve, the church. The same pattern, you see so adam adam was not deceived it was eve that was deceived no 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 it doesn't listen listen this i i already know 
I know what is in your heart and okay let me show you first Timothy 2, 2 and verse 14 if you think first Timothy 2 14 14 first Timothy 2 and verse 14 And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? The in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We're discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.